Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Mod of Minecraft. I'm here with Sneaky tonight. Uh, Hello. Yeah, Kate sends her regrets. She's not feeling well. Um, so, we're on a new build of the server today. We've added Fastcraft back in. It seems to do the trick, doesn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, I cannot distribute Fastcraft. Um, it is not permitted. They have restricted those rights, and I respect the mod authors and their rights. And so mm -hmm. if you want to add Fastcraft or COFH tweaks, whichever you prefer, whatever one works better for your particular server or single-player instance, mm -hmm. you'll have to add those in manually. Yeah. Now, today we're going to look at a new mod um, that we've added, uh, Schneeky has added, because... We have some concerns about Super Soren Drives um, in terms of their effect on the server's integrity. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Soren, if you're not familiar with him, he does a lot of streaming. He does a lot of gaming on Forgecraft, and he's got some Let's Plays that he does with Direwolf 20. And he came up with a really, really clever drive called the Super Soren Drive that will let you basically iterate storage buses so that it only takes up one channel on your main drive to store a whole bunch of stuff. The problem is that forces computationally AE to look through all of the iterations to find things. You've got miles and miles of cable, tons of storage buses, tons of interfaces, all of which have their ticks, all of which draw power. It was an amazing system for what it was, but... Um, there's one mod that makes it obsolete, and that mod is Storage Drawers. Um, I actually found this by accident. I, I saw it being used in a, in a Let's Play, and I didn't really at first understand just how stupidly powerful it was. I have since become a convert. Okay, so I'm going to get a few of the uh, drawers, which, by the way, are very, very cheap to make. Well, okay, not super cheap, but cheap enough, and I guess. It, they're, they're cheaper than Java barrels because it's just wooden planks in a chest. Okay, why is it not showing me all the recipes right now? That's weird. Well, we've got uh, versions that do 8 stacks. Uh, for, apparently there's 4, 8, 16, and 32 stack versions of these, right? Yeah, here's the thing. The, the ones that act like barrels that can only store one item... We'll store... also have double drawers that will store two separate items, but only 16 stacks of each. And then you've got the quad drawer that will store a total of four different items, eight stacks each. Either way, it adds up to one block storing 32 stacks, which hmm. is half the size of a Java barrel. So that, that was kind of one of the things that made me scratch my head and go, okay, but I can store more. Um... What sold me, and, and we'll get into this in a second, is how to automate this. So right now, we've, um, we've, we've plotted out something, and it's going to be over here is where we're going to set up our wall. Oops. And yeah, one of the things that we're going to set down here is this happy little device called the storage drawer. Let me grab and the... Uh... Let me grab the uh, storage bus. Uh, not yet, not yet. We don't want to hook it up yet. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we're gonna want to set this up first and then hook it up because otherwise it will it will okay. um, suck everything up from the AE system. Okay. All right. I'll uh, we'll just make some a route to get in. Yeah, we can. We can we can we can we, we can get in there. That's that's not going to be a big problem. So okay. this is the storage, con the drawer controller. Not very expensive. It does require a diamond and a couple of comparators, but nothing too terribly expensive, especially not at our level. Okay. Now then, by itself, the store drawer controller does absolutely nothing. What it allows you to do is automate inputting and outputting from every drawer connected to every drawer within a 12 by 12 by 12 cube centered on the controller. So a very, very big cube. Right. Which we happen to have picked out a room that is appropriately sized for it. So that means, in theory, 
that drawer right there should be connected to that um, controller, correct? Well, you have to have a line of drawers connecting to it. Oh, okay. So it's a uh, connection system. I didn't. I, I think it is a connection system. However, the line it draws can be more than twelve, as long as it is less than twelve linearly. I'm just getting. I'm just getting an axe quick here because these are wood and <laughs> wood items should be uh, are much easier to manage when you have an axe. Also, one other thing you will notice when you bring up any I and type in drawer, there's another thing called trim. Trim doesn't store anything, but they're ridiculously cheap. You can make a lot of them, and they're used for the corner connections where you're not going to be able to access that barrel back there in the corner. Um, okay. So you use trim instead, and it, oh, okay. it makes the connection. Neat. Now, the other thing is we can put a piece of trim, say, in the middle of the wall, like, say, where this hole is, mm -hmm. and then you can expand out onto the back side of this wall, and y y you can continue spreading along this wall into this other room over here where the Super Soren Drive currently resides. Neat. You can just follow this wall all the way around where these libraries are, and, and yeah, th this is this is... The potential for expansion is significantly more than a Super Soren Drive, which requires a very heavy investment of ME drive materials per block iteration. Okay, how do these things work with uh, NBT data? Like, say, with damaged bows and axes and armor and that sort of thing? Not so friendly. We'll okay. still want to use uh, cabinets for those. All right. Or we'll want to set up a, um auto repair system for anything we want to store in that realm. Something along those lines, okay. yeah. But th that's, that's not something that these things are designed to do. There is one other thing, however, it is designed to do, and that's called a compacting drawer. And mm -hmm. it only stores 16 stacks per drawer. However, it will also store one level of compression up and one level of compression down. Therefore, if you say put an iron, you, you say put iron nuggets or iron ingots into something, you can pull out iron ingots, you can pull out iron blocks, or you can pull out iron nuggets. This is really useful when you have things like, say, glowstone, where um, getting glowstone dust out of glowstone generally requires actually physically breaking it. This allows you to make that conversion without having to deal with that hassle. So cor correct um, me if I'm wrong, but does that mean also that makes the uh, inter-conversion recipes in the uh, ME system obsolete as well? So if you have, um, so if if you have this this thing set up to store iron ingots, you won't need, but to output ingots, uh, nuggets, or blocks. You won't actually need those recipes in the uh, ME system? Exactly. Now, here's where one little bug does show up, and mm -hmm. it's not really a bug so much as the way these things work. You will see all of the ingots and all of the nuggets and all of the blocks available simultaneously. However, when you draw something out, you will see all of them debited appropriately. Nice. For example, if, say, you've got two blocks of iron in there, which is also... 18 ingots and is also what 128 nuggets yeah that's, that's yeah yeah if you pull a block out it will drop everything down to one block or nine ingots or 81 uh nuggets in the system so it will Neat. appropriately credit and debit it will not duplicate but it, all of them show simultaneously, which can be a little bit confusing at first. That's actually kind of neat. I find that uh, that's sort of actually, honestly, that's sort of similar to um, some of the stuff I've noticed with uh, Fallout Force crafting. Yes, where it very, shows very potential. It shows potential capacity based on the stuff you haven't salvaged yet, even though you've got you know a clock in there. It shows you all the different things that uh, it doesn't. It just assumes that you're going to eventually break it down for parts, and so it just assumes that it's parts rather than a clock. Exactly. Basically, yeah. it's Schrodinger's mod. Okay, let's um, get a couple. Of, let's get some some. Um, well, let's get the basics going here. What should we? Uh, sure. Oh, there's one other thing that I would like to introduce you to. Oh. 
It is called the drawer key. Ooh. And what this key does is it allows you, you remember how Java barrels, you can shift right click with a bare hand and you can lock the barrels. So that even if they're empty, they will always accept the same thing? Yes. Cool. And not only that, but if they are empty, it will not accept anything automated. You have to manually put it in first. Cool. The key does that. The key, you just right-click with it, and you notice you've got a little keyhole icon on there. Yep. That one is now locked. Right-click again, and it goes away. It is unlocked. Okay. Well, let's... What? Uh, hmm? cool. Go oh, ahead. One other thing. Shift, right-click with a bare hand on a drawer. All right. Upgrades, and... Yeah. This is where you add upgrades like, say, the... Storage increase up five times the base value. So now that's 140 stacks that that particular barrel can hold. And you'll notice the obsidian little border there as you pull outside of it. Cool. You can also put in a void upgrade into these things. There's also other types of upgrades mm -hmm. that you can put in. Nice. Well, let's... Uh... Now... How much of this do we have to have set up before we can connect it to the ME system? Well, here's the thing. What I would like to do mm -hmm. is designate where things go before we actually start hooking it up to the AE system. Okay. Well, let's And then and then we can set up um we can set up a system to just pull pull all the things. Uh, we're probably going to want compacting drawers for all of the metals, so we can mm -hmm. count out. How, uh, we'll probably want compacting drawers for the glowstone, um, yeah. and probably the Certus nether quartz. Yeah, we because can actually, they can. We and yeah, if they, we store this all as blocks, like if we do if we do a block conversion as it imports, um, that'll reduce that'll uh, reduce the capa the capa stored need by nine ninefold it, so exactly so when you're talking about storing 16 stacks in a compacting drawer you're talking about 16 stacks of blocks and if we throw a store on obsidian upgrade in there there should be more than enough space for these that would be 140 stacks of blocks times nine is a lot, a lot. <laughs> more than we have okay well let's let's start with the easy stuff then let's do the saplings first because, well, and we can always, I, I, this thing is something we can rearrange if we need to, right? Yeah. So. In fact, that actually brings us to the other mod that we added onto the server. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and look up the recipe for a dolly in NEI. Okay. I see... You will see that there are two new types of dollies. There is. There's the ones from Java, and there are ones from a mod called Inventory Tools. The, yeah. Um, it, these were explicitly designed to be able to work with the enhanced inventories chests. They sometimes didn't like Java barrel huh. dollies. And so this thing will work on enhanced inventories, um, improved chests. It was actually made by the same author, mm -hmm. and it is also guaranteed to be compatible with storage drawers and several other mods that we're not using, nice. as well as Java barrels. So we can move these around at will. Within the mod of um, the things, there's also um, packing tape that can be used. Mm -hmm. uh, however, packing tape has a durability. Ah, okay. But that's cool. That's cool. All right, I've made 10 more of these drawers. Um, what, the compacting drawers? Uh, no, just the regular drawers for um, saplings. You want to make a ah. batch of compacting ones and we'll set those up? I'm just... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's nine different kinds of saplings that we had in the uh, SSD, and I think we're going to want to have... Uh, some different ones as well, eventually, if we're going to start farming other, like the Dark Oak, I think, we'll want a spot for. So that's 10. 
We can also leave space for expansion of a couple of varieties that we don't have don't have in the system yet, right? One, two, there is three, very four, little in five. the way we cannot do with this. All right. Well, I'm just making a double stack of sapling drawers here, right by the controller, which we can use to basically proof of concept this thing, I think. Rubber. I'm making an encoded pattern for the compacting drawer. Oh, did I? Cool. Birch. Apparently, I've wound up with two stacks of some of these. That works. Let's see. So let's see how many how many compacting drawers are we gonna want? How many metals do we have? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. Can... Oh, what else should we put in? I'm gonna start off with sixteen, just as a as a nice even number I to think start that's off a good, with. That's a good number to start with. We'll get some willows. I'm wondering if we should put some of these interesting ones and eucalyptus. I, th I think we, at some point we should I should switch out what's in the uh, wood farm for some new uh, wood types, just for fun. I've got to make myself a key of my own so I can lock these barrels though. Also, once you put a thing in the barrel, you don't have to worry about random things showing up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense, but but yeah, it is no, good the, insurance. The key is, and actually, how about this? Why don't you why don't you have, be the keeper of this key unless you've already oh, made? I just one. made one. There's no reason not to have two of them. Okay, yeah, no, no problem Especially... at all. There's. I'm gonna do. And... Yeah, as any engineer will tell you, there is no harm in redundancy. Yeah. All right, what's it's uh, what's it not? What do we not have here? It's trying to make spruce drawers out of jungle wood, apparently. Interesting. Why would it do that? I have no clue. And yours is trying to make uh, birch one, uh, compacting drawers out of jungle wood planks using birch drawers. Weirdness. I don't know how jungle wood ended up doing that. That's that's not. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Uh, do we have a recipe for? Well, it's part possibly because of the inter uh, mixability of woods but let me see no there is a recipe for yeah it should have requested the right kind of wood why did it do that it worked fine a minute ago hold on yeah why would it that was super weird. Super duper weird. Okay. Well, regardless. So it's just a right click to lock it? Yep, yep just a regular old right click. Okay. Well, once we've got these drawers in place, this this first sets of drawers in place, we should demonstrate for everyone's amusement. Are those ones in the corner going to be available there, Schneeky? Absolutely, it's exactly twelve blocks long, well, no, and I they're meant, all connected. Well, I meant, uh, wasn't this? Is it, if we're going to put them along this back wall here, aren't, isn't these? Aren't these drawers going to be uh, inaccessible? Oh well, technically they won't be, but you have a valid point, so I shall move them. Yeah. Just uh, just the cor just just uh, the corner issue. That's all. Let's see. I'll get some logs, and then 
yeah, once we've got these uh, basic things set up, we should demonstrate how the uh, we should hook it up and see, and show how it how it's all going to work. Rubber, birch, acacia. Come on. All right. Oop, I'm apparently um, going to starve to death in a minute here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be embarrassing? That would definitely be extraordinarily embarrassing, yes. Almost as embarrassing as that burp that came out of me at the end there. Oh, what other ones did I put in there? I put uh, birch. I've got birch. I've got rubber. Acacia, willow, five, six, seven, eight, I'm going to do pine, apparently don't have some of these woods that I was hoping to have here, oh well, figure it out later. Yeah. No, apparently Kate's used it all up. That's okay. Okay. Willow. Dark oak sapling. Seed. Wonder what. Let's see. Birch. Whoops. Pretty sure that's the hop seed wood. All right, the wood section is ready for now. Oh. All right, interesting. Are you ready to do a demo of the um, sneaky? Yes, I am. Let me let me give you an idea of just how amazing this is. Now, is it going to try and push stuff into these uh, drawers that we don't have programmed yet? It could. That's why I'm going to do something else as a demonstration. All right, I'll just, you know what, I'll just temporarily lock all of them. Okay. Because we can program. Yeah, but here's what I'm going to do really quick to show you just how amazing this is. You notice okay. this, this hopper I've set up on the actual, um, the, the controller, right? Yep. I'm going to go ahead and drop a barrel on top of that thing. And? And crash the server. Whoops. That didn't do quite what you expected, did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It, did it crash I the server? I think I accidentally click on the No, I didn't. It didn't crash the server. It just it I'm I'm getting back on now. I don't know. I got I just got a fail to connect. Uh Java connect connection refused. Well, I think we're going to have to call it there and figure out why I can't get back on the server and we'll pick this up in the next episode. Yeah, server's down. Yeah. Okay. See you next time.